Patrick Chapat has been the editorial cartoonist at the International Herald Tribune since uh, August of 2001. That's rather suspicious. Um, his twice weekly cartoon, of course, is uh, also on the New York Times Global Edition website. Uh, this is interesting uh, in lieu of some of the uh, things we saw from uh, from uh, Matt Bors and others. Uh, he has been working since 2005 as a comics reporter uh, from Gaza during the uh, war, uh, from the slums of Nairobi in uh, Kenya, uh, uh, gang violence in Guatemala City, really know how to travel, uh, and the uh, Arab Spring in Tunisia. In uh, last year, he turned one of those uh, cartoon reports into an animated film, featured on uh, TV and in uh, international documentary festivals. Et aussi, il a reçu le prix de Thomas Nast de l'Overseas Press Club in 2012, le premier um, citoyen du notre pays, which is the only way I know how to say foreigner, citizen of some other country, uh, the first foreigner to receive that prize. So, uh, Patrick, welcome, and uh, we're happy to have you here. That's real good French. So yeah, I come from a, a place called, uh, you know, the rest of the world, <laughs> overseas. I live in Geneva, Switzerland. So if you have any question about Swiss banks, uh, come to me. If you want to close down that embarrassing Swiss bank account, you just come to me after that. I can give you some advice. And uh, I was born actually, in, uh, it gets worse, you know, when you talk about August 2001. I was born in, in Pakistan. Um, my mother is Lebanese, so I'm like the axis of evil, me alone. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you 15 minutes of cartoons on Swiss politics. <laughs> the 15 most boring minutes of your life. <laughs> No, 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 let's get serious. I'm going to show you cartoons about the U.S. Hey, wait, wait, wait. There is a problem with this slide. This, this, this can't be the U.S. Th those are poor guys, poor people. Um, or maybe, uh, I mean, not yet. Maybe after four years of Mitt Romney, but... <laughs> there you go. This is, this is the third world. This is the South, obviously. And uh, here is America. So he says, move over a bit, you know, not enough room. Uh, I'm afraid to say this is, of course, a cliche. It's, this is how you look like from, as seen from abroad. The fat guy with, with a baseball cap, I'm sorry. We use cliche, we cartoonists, that's, that's our vocabulary. Doesn't mean that what we say is, 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 is not subtle, of course. But uh, what do you do when you wanna, when you wanna draw a, a guy in, in France? What do you do? You, 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 you draw a guy with a beret, you know, a moustache, a bag, and uh, bread and, and wine in his bag. So that's me. It's the Frenchman. It's, it's right. So, but uh, this great nation, every four years, kind of get um, self-absorbed. And this is, of course, the time of the American election. That's when foreign affairs are on standby. Well... Not exactly this year, right? It seems like foreign affairs are, are coming back through the, through the window uh, with all those riots, anti-American riots. It's, it's amazing how the world can change so fast. A few days ago, we were all talking about pussy riots. <laughs> okay, uh, you have no idea how we, the rest of the world, we are following closely the American election. The only thing missing is the right to vote, actually. Four years ago, for sure, the, vote, the, the, the world would have voted Barack Obama. He was the messiah. He was, he was Jesus. But back then, we knew already how tough it would be, you know? There would be so many miracles to accomplish. Yeah, got on a bad start. But we liked uh, Barack Obama from the start. We liked the way he talked to us, the rest of the world. All this talk of soft power. 
He tried to make friends with Iran, if you remember. <laughs> Didn't work. Then he, he really never was friend with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Obama tried to talk uh, him out of building settlements in, in the West Bank, but he had a hard time getting heard. You know, I don't hear you. And hey, Kim Jong-il, I don't know about you, that's my all-time favorite, Kim Jong-il, you remember? The little guy, I mean, half of his size was his, his hairdo. A nasty little guy bent on destroying the world with his nukes. Like really a character taken out of Cartoon Network, but he passed away, so sadly, he died. I loved him. In 2009, Obama got the Nobel Peace Prize, and here he is, uh, three years after that, he's looking at that prize and thinking, if only I had received the Economy Prize. And you know, forget about North Korea or Iran, uh, I mean, the US hasn't, be, hasn't been a very peaceful country, not at peace with itself in the last few years. We've, we've been quite worried to see the rise of the Tea Party. I'm going to take America back, century back. <laughs> and here comes Mitt Romney. He's riding this big uh, angry animal. And where are they going? They're going, of course, to the right. Should the rest of the world be worried? China is a bit worried. <laughs> and of course, we're all worried about the economy, uh, especially one man has to be worried about it. Yeah, those are a few uh, cartoons, but what I want to talk about today is the other side of my job, what you mentioned. Uh, comic journal, uh, there is no real word for that. Is it comic journalism, C cartoon reporting? Uh, in Europe, we even say graphic uh, journalism. What, what should we say? I don't, I'm not sure. Um, I've been doing that, as, as, you, as, as has been said, for the last uh, 15 years, in parallel to my work as politi political cartoonist. And my stories have been published in newspapers, like the International Herald Tribune and Le Temps in Geneva. Let me show you, there, there, there was a story that just came out uh, on Monday. It was over three days. See how the newspaper, um, this is Le Temps in Geneva. So this one is about urban violence in Guatemala. It's just, you have no idea how, how bad it gets over there. And this is how they... So typically, they would give me full pages of the newspaper. Th those were six full pages over three days. Um, I'll show you two more. Wow. That's nice. Okay, okay uh, that's, that's the traditional way. <laughs> well, that's the traditional way of, of, of uh, publishing this, this type of work. Then, of course, you have books. Um, you know Joe Sacco, he, ha he has been doing an amazing work. This is my book that came out only in French for now, in October. And then uh, I want to talk about other forms and possibilities that are that this genre allow. And I've been experimenting with some stuff. I'm going to show you that a bit later. But why, why first, in, in the first place, why go to places and do that when, you know, being a political cartoonist is, is the best job in the world? Um, it's personal. I like to go and see the places. And uh, I lived in New York City. Uh, every day I would pass through this uh, windy plaza and I would look up and that was really magical. Uh, so this was my neighborhood. So w when 9-11 uh, happened, I was back in Geneva at the time. I had moved back. I, I thought, you need, I don't know how to grasp, to translate this, an event of this magnitude into political cartoons. And let's be frank, if you want to put together the worst book of political cartoons ever, it would be the book of all the cartoons published on September 12th, including mine. So I went to New York, I went back to Ground Zero, where I lived, uh, two weeks after. Uh, the story was published in French only at the time. Here you see the first page. And you know, I think the we're zooming in. The, the, the beauty of comic journalism is really it gives the reader the ability to 
pause and to really look with zooming in and to really see the details. And I think that's, that's the amazing power of the simple drawing if you compare it you know, to, the, to the complexity of photography or to the fast pace of video. It allows you to see things. Then in 2009, I went to South Lebanon to, for a story uh, that was two years and a half after a war between Israel and the Hezbollah. Not many people know that, but in the last days of that war, millions of cluster munitions were dropped on that region. And very often, those uh, cluster munitions, they, they, they didn't explode. They were old. You could see um, expiration date on some of these. They were dating back to Vietnam, and then the expiration date is June 74. So they were rusty. A lot of them did not explode, and they turned this region into a giant minefield. So when we publish these stories, each time we do that, we do, of course, a web version uh, in Flash. And that's a very interesting, a very different experience for the reader, because you can, it's, it's a frame by frame, and you can click your way through the story. This is uh, in the middle of that same story in South Lebanon. I am uh, in the house of a young woman of 19, her name is Russia. She's a victim. And uh, in her case, it's amazing. She didn't even step on a cluster munition. Uh, it's the bomb that came to her house. Her father had come home with a sack of thyme leaves, you know, spices, and the family was gathered around the sack. And then she plunged her hand into the, into the bag and she felt something cold. She dropped it and it exploded. So the teenager was the only one hit. The bomb took her left leg. And she says, you know, when I go to bed, my leg hurts, the missing one. I feel it as if it was still there. So you click from one frame to the other. I wish I, wish I was like everyone else. This, this is not funny, really. Uh, but uh, you can see how the web, uh, just simple animation, allows you to, to be inside the story and to, and to take your time. And I also think that comic journalism has this uh, ability to tell the personal story in a very intimate way, the personal story that is behind the, the big you know, news story. And uh, I wanted to go beyond those simple, this is like PowerPoint uh, for the web, but I wanted to go beyond those simple animations. For years, I wanted to do uh, a film. And I had the chance last year uh, to partner with the International Committee of the Red Cross. And we turned that story, the same story in South Lebanon, into a movie. Let's, let's see an extract. That day, the boys didn't do as they were told. Ashraf, 12, and Khader, 13. Instead of staying on the road, the brothers took the path through a forest. They were looking for pine cones when their wheelbarrow hit a stone. Ashraf, the younger boy, picked it up. What the children found was not a stone. Ashraf died. His brother survived, but was wounded in the stomach. In this country of olives, spices and almond trees, seeds have been sown. These seeds are made from metal. Instead of giving life, they take it. They are cluster munitions. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So if you're not uh, sad and desperate enough, you can see the whole film, uh, it's 12 minutes long at this um, address. And uh, 
this one, so it was, it was aired on TV. I was very proud. It was aired on Swiss TV a Sunday night in a segment like 60 minutes. It was shown on Canal Plus and on a German channel. Um, it, as we said, it toured a few documentary festivals, including here in Washington, got a prize in Australia. Uh, but still, so we used, uh, for those who wonder, we used After Effects mostly, a few real animation and uh, uh, real music. Uh, we had musicians work on that. So it's a lot of money. It's costly. And, uh, but uh, as I said, this was a sponsorized effort. So I'm sure the cartoonists here in the room will wonder, you know, is there a market for that? And the sad uh, answer is, so far, no. Maybe it's too early. I had the hope that uh, a documentary, a animated documentary could be widely shown on television the way graphic journalism, comic journalism has uh, made its way into the print media. But, you know, television is very conservative. Those people will tell you, uh, but we don't have that kind of format. Of course you don't. It's new. <laughs> Come on. So, uh, just to show you a few possibilities, and I really truly believe that cartoons, whatever happens to the print uh, media, cartoons uh, have many possibilities, there are many forms, many ways we can use cartoon to help tell the, the stories. Thank you very much. <laughs>